Welcome everyone to Cisco Canada's virtual kitchen. We are like super stoked about today. And like, this is unbelievable, first of all. But uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the perfect steak and who, who's better to cook the perfect steak but these two chefs. Uh, welcome, chefs. Welcome, Kevin, Rob. Thank you so much for being on our show today. Well, thank, thank you very much. much. It's a pleasure. It's an honor. It is an absolute honor to have you both here. And I just, first of all, uh, Kevin, um, no more pictures or views of your other side of the kitchen there. It's too beautiful. Um, <laughs> I barely allowed that one. Oh, um, boy. Here we go. But, but so Rob, you're out. You're in Toronto. Kevin, you're in Montreal. We're gonna talk about the perfect steak today. Um, it's the time. It's the season. Cooking, barbecuing, um, ordering in restaurants on the patios. Um, today, we got to find out and share with our customers, share with our viewers, really what makes the perfect steak. You guys up for it? Yeah, I'm up. Are you up for it? Mine's ready to All go. Right. I'm gonna put so Rob, let's now. go to you first. Let's go over to you, Rob. Okay, well, what I think the perfect steak is, is medium rare for me personally, uh, you know, 125 degrees, 130 degrees internal temperature with just some summer vegetables. Plain and simple, nothing fancy, salt, pepper. I got a little salsa verde going on the side here, but that's it. That, that's as far as I'm gonna show off today, okay? <laughs> Chef, show us what you're doing. I'm gonna Chef, what are you doing? Well, I agree with you. I think a perfect steak for me would be medium rare as well. And uh, I'm about to cut the steak right now to see if it's medium rare. We'll find out. Nice. You're putting pressure right. on me, uh, Chef Rob, there. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to show you, I'm gonna have to show you the cuisson. Okay, I, think, uh, I think we're good here, yeah, Chef. Nice. I love and uh, and uh, for sure, I like it simple, beautiful. Here I've got a little uh, uh, rabigot sauce, which is a French classic. Uh, it's a shallot white wine and uh, lots of herbs and uh, got some eggs also in there, which is basically like a chunky bernaise. And uh, yeah, just the same way. I would usually have this with a frit or even some uh, grilled vegetable. Nice. nice. Very so nice. these are Cisco, you know, we're not here to pitch product much, but I really wanted to say these are Cisco's steaks from our Cisco Fine Meats program and our companies out there. And really, you know, we, we tend to, you know, kind of not really focus on steaks with the whole delivery and takeout that's happening right now. What do you guys think that makes, what would what, what you say to people out there that, you know, may have, I wouldn't say forgotten about the steaks for delivery and takeout, but what would you guys say to really encourage other restaurateurs to keep going when it comes to steak and takeout and delivery right now? I think well, personally, I think personally, uh, it's the traveling time, which is the, the problem when the steak is already cooked with like delivered by Uber Eat or whatever, whoever is delivering it. And uh, by the time it gets to you, the cuisson is done, the resting, and then uh, it's uh, have a tendency of being overcooked. I think the best way to do it, I think, uh, for delivery, to inspire the restaurant, I would make, uh, mostly I would go with a steak tartare, or I would even create a package with steak uh, that is cooked sous vide, which is uh, all you have to do with an instruction that goes uh, three minutes on each side on the grill, just to get the color and bring the heat inside and then finish it up with some salt and pepper, which is the steak is already cooked in advance to be a beautiful package. I think it's nice. with the travel steak right now. I do Thanks. love that. I love that idea. Uh, because here's the, here's the simple thing, that if you cook it to medium rare and then you deliver it, it will be obviously way over by the time that customer wants it. So we'd either cook, undercook it and then tell them to put it into an oven. Now, chef knows this as well as I do. In a steakhouse, sometimes you'll get it grilled, marked, and it finished in an oven. But again, we know what the, we know what the timing is. It's so it's super imperative that we know what the timing is. Probing it, making sure that the temperature is what it's supposed to be. But for takeout, I still say undercook it if you're not going to sous vide, and then basically, you know, tell the customer pop that into the oven for five minutes or eight minutes or whatever it takes in a 500 degree oven. Get it back to temperature, let it rest again, and then eat it. Absolutely. So, 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 chefs, what's your what's the favorite cut? Then, would you recommend a different cut for takeout and delivery? I, I would recommend a thick, uh, thick cut. 
Thank you very much. Like, I agree. I think uh, you know what I mean. The smaller yeah. it is, uh, the, the 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 faster the heat goes inside, and uh, and the faster it get overcooked and dry. I would say a Cote de Boeuf, a tomahawk, something like that. Uh, a steak for 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 two, three people, four people, depend on your appetite. And uh, I think that's the best. That's personal. Uh, you know, I, if the chef is gonna keep going first, I'm just gonna go. Yes. <laughs> wait, 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 you wait, agree with me? Wait, wait, no, no, I have to agree with you, chef. I have to listen. I'm on the, I'm on the grill right now. My perfect steak is always a ribeye. It's yeah. the king of grilling steaks. It has the fat cap. It has everything that you need in there to keep moisture. That's all yeah. we're looking for: moisture. Fat equals flavor. If yeah. everybody understands that uh, same profile, we're very good. Uh, we're golden. I don't want to overcook my steak here. I'm oh, gonna, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna oh. turn it just a little bit. If I, if I reveal and it's good, you say, "Ooh." If it's bad, just turn the camera off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go for a ooh. Can I, can I, can I, can I get a ooh? All right, all right. Ah, uh, you're gonna get ooh. No, not yet. All right, all right, all right. Thank you very much. That's it. I am. Turn me off now, please. I, I can, you're good. You're you're good, Rob. I can't You've get better. Been You've been chopped, Chef. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I can go. So, Kevin, what are you doing there in the frying pan there? Sorry, uh, the frying pan. I just uh, I, I kept the fat. Uh, I trim it a little bit, all the fat, which is we usually uh, keep it and render the fat away. Okay, really so, cool. Yeah, we render the fat away. Uh, we have a, at Bordeaux. We try uh, uh, pretty much all our steak, all the beef filet mignon that comes in. We don't have any uh, pretty much any trim. Because uh, we're gonna use the fat for uh, burger, for even to rest the meat. We're gonna render the fat to rest the meat after in there. And we have like a tenderloin will come in. The end of the tenderloin will become a tartare. The, the 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 centerpiece is gonna become beef Wellington or whatever dish we're making. And then you're gonna also have uh, we're gonna also have all the shen. We're gonna turn it into Bordelais sauce, which is a, a base sauce that goes with all the sauce in uh, what we do in Montreal. Nice. nice. So we pretty much like nothing goes. Even the silver skin, we turn it into something. Really? Oh, that's awesome. Very good idea. Chef. Very good idea. Yeah, I it's think. So uh, yeah. Especially in a time like the, what we just let leave the, in the last uh, year, I think uh, I think we need to think differently about wasting and uh, try to uh, maximize the most as we can. Yeah, it's huge right now nowadays, right? We don't know if we're going to be closed or open or closed and open. Yeah, to yeah exactly. It's, uh, you never know. You never know, right? Yeah. So I'm going to ask some stuff. So how are you guys doing out there in the industry right now in Montreal? And then let's start with in you, Kev. Yeah, in Montreal right now, my, uh, our restaurant uh, our restaurant is located in the Le Mans Stephen uh, Hotel. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's uh, right now it's closed. We started a little bit for for takeout, and then we realized that the takeout was not for the for the place, and it was very hard, uh, not uh, uh, mentally and everything, to have a busy restaurant and suddenly start doing takeout and uh, even on the on the, on our cook sous chef's mind head. So, but other restaurant is designed for it is uh, is doing well. But obviously, we want to we want to have the interaction with our guests. We want to. We want to serve the guests. We want to see them. We want to feel their energy and their body language and uh, and all the stuff. But it looked like uh, it looked like we are not very far. I think we are like uh, four weeks, uh, five weeks away. Yeah. If the vaccine goes well and uh, everything uh, goes to plan. You're gonna be ready for it, I bet you. Eh? We're ready. gonna be ready. We're already working on it, and uh, I can't wait to have our guests tasting our new menu and have a good time and have you guys and have Chef Rob over and. Man, I can't wait to feed people. Let's go. Yeah, uh, it's gonna be awesome. Hey, Chef Rob, how are you doing out there in Toronto with this? Like, it's the it same going? thing. It, listen, we're closed right now. Um, I'm breath testing pretty much every day to make sure that when the staff does come back, we're ready to go. Um, it's been it's been quite tough because mentally, you know what we we as chefs we we pray for service, and there's yeah. no service. And every day that there's no service, 
I still, I, I'm, I'm still getting anxious, uh, you know, because I want to get going again. You know, I, yeah. I want to call my pass. I want to command my brigade. I want to make sure everybody's getting fed properly outside. We have a 1,200 person patio, which we can only do 500 people now at a time per seating. Oh. We have four seating, socially distant, six feet away from each, each party. So it's one of those situations where we're ready to go. We're ready to go, we're chomping at the bit, but we just have to relax ourselves. And you know what? Recipe testing to me is one of the better parts of uh, being a chef because yep. even even if I make a mistake, I still eat it. <laughs> so you know, I get it. <laughs> so, so I'm Murder. very happy. I'm very happy on that. Right now, look, I I had my steaks grilled. I'm just letting them rest now perfectly. I will slice this, and I know, like again, uh, I, I like to tell people that yes, you could use a thermometer, but it's when you have this touch and this head, and they work together, you become the chef you really want to be. I was going to so, say, you still use the finger touch of the medium rare, the well so we do, We do, we do yeah, rare, medium rare, yep. finger, <laughs> medium. <laughs> <laughs> it's me. I love it. And uh, I have a, we have a wedding ring called this is suffering. This is medium well. And this is a nice. feeling I don't, I don't want to feel. It's well done. With the pinky up, this is well done. I don't like that feeling, but if my guest wants it, guess what? I'm going to smile and I'm going to give it to them. And we're going to provide it. Uh, it's going to yeah. be awesome when we all get back and be able to. And Kevin, I think you nailed it as well as that whole entertaining and serving people. And that's why we get into this industry is the hospitality. Yeah, we, we are like, a, I think chef, we're like, a, we're like artists. We're like, we're, we're like a painter. We need a paint and a boat to be able to express ourselves. You know, yeah. like, that's the, I think that's the hardest part for restaurateurs. It, it almost become like, it's not even about financial. It's about who we are and why we wake up every day and go for it. And, uh, you know, we need that. We almost need that adrenaline. This is what we go for. The main, the main idea is not to... Uh, to go to work and we, we go to look for that energy and the guests give us that energy and on a daily basis they like it or they don't like it we fix it and we are happy and we keep going and i think that's what most chef is missing and that's what it can take a toll on certain people i think it's and more yeah. like a rock star i think it's You're like right. you, need, you need the audience in the concert as well as an artist right well yeah. listen here's something that people don't talk about a lot it's the mental health of our cooks and ourselves. Yes. Yeah. I think I think we sit here and we say to each other, "Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Don't worry. It's it's passing." Since March of last year, we've opened, we've shut, we've opened, we've shut, and yeah. you cannot. We're not a Ferrari, okay? No. We're more like a Lamborghini, okay? You have to warm us up. You gotta rub our tires. Yeah, you gotta absolutely. Make sure we feel good. Yeah, we can't just say, "Hey, tomorrow we're gonna go." We're not gonna be ready. We don't do yeah. that kind of food. So it's imperative that people understand that chefs are going through, and not just chefs. I think the whole world is going through this, but we entertain people. We, when you're playing, we're working. That's exactly. the big difference. Yeah. That's the yeah. disconnect between people. I like that. And no, I think that's, that's exactly important. what it is. Right, Kevin? I think it's so important that we address that because it's, it's tough out there right now. And I can't even, have, and I think it's the whole thing of your staff. Like, how have you guys led through having to let go? You know, I, 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 I try to contact them and uh, talk to them. And it's very, very hard, you know, like I, I, even the laziest one now want to work. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's crazy. It's, uh, and you can hear them in their voice. I try, I try not to text anyone and call them to have a real feeling of their voice and everything. And they're anxious. They want to come back to work. Some of them has turned into new uh, domain. Uh, they find a new way and go back to school or whatever. But I can't wait to have uh, all the stuff because we were a family. Now it's like uh, being here with, uh, with three, four people and uh, we were supposed to be 20 in the kitchen yeah. and on the floor and everything. I, I, I think when we, lay, when we lay out uh, in March, we lay out around 100 and something people. And it was the most uh, craziest thing. Uh, it was the saddest thing ever. Yeah. I went home, I didn't talk for a good uh, six hours, I didn't say nothing. And my wife just let me be and I was just like, it's crazy, it's collapsing, you know? 
But then again, we are we are creative. We find a way to make it work uh, during the summer. Before the summer, we find the uh, we got busy. We made uh, some food for the frontliners and find a way to get people like a few people back on just to keep it rolling, to keep feeding, to keep doing something, keep moving momentum. Uh, the whole thing, the whole pandemic is like a bicycle, you know, like if you stop moving, you, you're going to, you're going to fall. Mm -hmm. That's so true. It's so true. And I, I, I am just blown away by restaurateurs that we have in our industry that just keeps going, like it doesn't throw in the towel and just keeps going. I think it's a different DNA <laughs> than I see out there, to be honest. I think it's more incredible to hear the stories and to hear people just, like you said, six hours and you're back at it and being able to just keep going. It's incredible. So I just pay homage to you guys. It's unbelievable. You guys are a different DNA that's out there. And it's our industry that's really taken the blunt of this, right? Of this whole on or off, on or off. And I'm sure there's other industries out there as well. But um, this is a very sensitive area because we know it's hard to make money in this without a pandemic. Well, and, uh, and we're going to lose. And we're going to lose a lot of uh, a lot of the people we've already yeah. lost to the industry. Uh, I have some folks now that are driving UPS and, and FedEx, and believe me, when they phone me, it's, it's heartbreaking to hear that chef. I I have to take this job because I have to feed my family, you know, and, and I have nothing. I can I can't offer them come back home right now because we just can't afford it. That's the hardest part. That's the heartbreaking part for me as a chef. It is. It really no, is. For sure, for sure. I, had, uh, I know, I, I hear you, chef. Uh, I, I, I look, I'm getting emotional. I, I, had, uh, I had the same feeling when the when it happened to me. I was just like, I understand, man. I haven't called you in, in nine months. Yeah, I understand. I you, need to take a, you need to take another job, man. It's okay. Like, uh, don't feel bad. Like, uh, my door will always be open. Our door... ONB, our family will always be there, but you got to do what you got to do, man. I hear you. 100%. My door is always open to, to any cooks that want to come back. I don't care what you've done. I don't, I, I could not care less. Come home and we're ready to go again. I just, you know, right now in Ontario, we have, and I, I don't want to get too political, but, you know, we, we have some people that are making decisions that are not really looking at the totality of what it's doing to the economy, number one. Number two, to the people. The, the people are the most important part of this whole process. And if you yeah. tell somebody to stay home and do nothing or to collect whatever this little money they're giving you, that's not enough to make anybody mm -hmm. live a successful life. Absolutely. It's killing, it's killing me. Oh man, 10 on 10, man, 10 on 10. Absolutely, I think the same thing here. And uh, what is, uh, look, I, 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 I'm trying to be, it's gonna be positive. I think in, in, the, in the next coming months, uh, with all the vaccine going, things are gonna rolling. But uh, what we just lived through and what, uh, what uh, the authority made us do with uh, uh, social distancing, buying plexiglass and uh, sanitizer, wearing masks, ha having people controlling the door and everything, and then telling us after that me going hang out in the park is better. I don't know about that uh, with 10 people, but uh, anyway, I find it's, uh, we were well designed for that this summer to keep going. That's what I, my uh, two cents on that. Well, it's, awesome. it's been tough. But it's, I mean, I'm, I'm in my kitchen and I'm wearing a mask. And our job is to taste food as it goes. Mm -hmm. And trying to pull your mask down, pull yeah. it back up. This is like, what is the reality of our job? Like, I, I tell people, listen, I'm vaccinated. I have one shot. My second shot is in August. I'm 54 years old. So I'm not on the young scale anymore, but I'm not old. But I know that I have to protect myself. I have to protect my children, my two university no, age yeah. daughters. Yeah, yeah, I have to protect my family. So I'm doing what it takes. And I don't care what, if you're anti-vaxxer and you don't want to listen to what I'm saying. Do what you do. But I'm yeah. all on the side of being cautious and taking care of the people that I love around me. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. So, Chef, Kevin, can you just share with us what you have on the plate there? We'll go yeah. to this other camera here. Yeah, wow. we go. Oh. Look at that. So, like uh, Chef Robert said, uh, he likes to take a, uh, a very simple, and the uh, same goes here, man. I don't like to put too much thing on it. So, here we've got that beautiful sauce that I said that, uh, that uh, Ravi got sauce. Uh, uh, like a chunky uh, bernese, uh, acidic, acidic uh, with, uh, reduced white wine with shallots and uh, uh, lots of herbs and dragon 
and uh, just a steak cooked with Montreal steak spice, seasoned salt and pepper, Montreal steak spice, uh, rest, and then we're just finishing up with some plovisel and bangarang. Beautiful. So, Chef, do you render the, also that, the fats and everything you have there, do you render that down then? Would you put that on? Would you add that into this dish or would that no, be? No, I'm not going to add it onto the dish. Right now, I don't have it rendered. And okay. it just it doesn't look nice, but I'm going to show that to you. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, we usually render the fat. So we're gonna when we have fat, we trim and everything like that. We take it, we render it down. And then we just turn it into a little resting uh, uh, resting uh, pan where we put this thing in, inside to rest a little bit. And then it goes on the rack. So we use okay. it, we just go in, add more fat to it while it's resting, it's chilling, you know what I mean? What's some of the things for both of you? What are some of the things that people do wrong when they come and they cook a steak? We always look at what we do right, but what are those things that you see over and over through your years of people doing wrong when it comes to cooking the perfect steak? You know what? Bringing the temperature, bring it into room temperature before you put it onto the grill. Number oh. one thing that needs to happen. Oh. I just watched the TikTok um, on the steak because we're doing this, and the guy put mayonnaise on it. Don't do that. No. Don't do that. I don't care who you are. The man. Do do I don't care who you are. You're not putting mayonnaise on that bloody steak. <laughs> that's, that's one mistake. That's one mistake I see people making. And again, what I like is complete pink all the way through. Yeah. To me, but to me, that's what a good steak to taste like, look like. And again, I'll do this. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, man. Even though I made it myself. So yeah. All right. No, I'm my yeah. All right. Fuck it. I'm taking my mask. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Here I am. There you go. It only took you uh, 22 minutes. What can I do? With a minutes. face like this, with a face like this, who wants to cover it? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, so uh, I think that's a, I think that's a great tip, though, because I see a lot of people will have their steaks under in the cooler, underneath their grill, or on their line, and then they'll pull it out and throw it on the grill. So, chef, you said make sure they put them at room temperature. Bring it out fifteen minutes ahead of time. Okay, that's okay. kind of you know what you need to do. And that's on the low side. If you have it out for half an hour, remember we have this thing called the danger zone, four degrees. 40 degrees Celsius, 140 degrees Celsius. We know what we're working with here. If you, if you work within this four hour rule, if you leave anything out for this length of time, you're gonna have bacteria, you'll have uh, bad things happen to you. But if you work within the window, you're good. Like I said, uh, learn a little bit of food safety and you will be a great cook. Because I think most of the people out there, they think they have, like I remember, they watch TikTok and they go, oh, 30 seconds, <laughs> I know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> I went to culinary school for two years. I've been a chef for 25 years and I'm still learning. So come on, stop it. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Totally agree. Yeah. The 30 second learning isn't, isn't, you need a little more. You need a little yeah, more. Yeah, for sure. The room temperature <laughs> the steak, depending on the size of the steak, of course, I sometimes at home goes for a good hour and everything. But uh, yeah, for sure. I see 15 to 30 minutes at home. It's, uh, it's super nice to, to have it. And, and like, like Chef said earlier, Chef Rob, um, I like my steak, same here, I like it uniform, just uh, outside, uh, beautifully uh, grilled, and then it's nice and pink in the middle. Most of the time I see people do it, and they forget it on one side, they went three minutes, on the other side they went, I don't know me, seven minutes, and you have this gap. So the steak is like half rare, half uh, medium uh, well, and uh, that's for me. Yeah, exactly. We all been to that party, and, and also that party where the steak you cut into it and it's just bleeding, it's pissing everywhere. Yeah, yes, they did. Is that from not resting? Is that from? Is that caused by not resting? Not resting. No, right. yeah, it was caused because not resting. You're getting into it right away. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then it goes. I don't know. The steak is not that good. Oh my god! What are you talking about? You have two choices. You can have hot steak, okay, or you can have yeah. well rested steak that's tender and juicy because the myoglobin needs to go back and redistribute back into the muscle. So again, most people, you know, you cook it, it pumps up. It's not blood, it's myoglobin. Uh, and I, I, I hate being uh, the per nutty professor, but uh, it, people need to know 
that the, a lot of these things that you've learned that you've seen in the past are, are just that because our parents, I did, my mother didn't say, well, Rob, um, we're having steak today. Uh, would you like medium rare? Uh, no, no, <laughs> it, it, it was gray all the way through. I don't care. And you had to eat it and you didn't eat that. You had cornflakes, cornflakes people. I don't even yeah. know where to eat it. Does anybody know about cornflakes anymore? But anyhow, I digress. But again, just knowing the proper technique, that's kind of more important than anything else. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, that's respect awesome. the, and respect the product. I think it's key. Yes. Great. Respect the product and everything, understanding that uh, there's a lot of work that goes with behind, uh, be, uh, 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 be, uh, backstage on that. And just like uh, gentle. Let's also learn to cook gentle also. Some people seem to like, uh, if there's a stick, there needs to be a fire. You can do that if you know what you're doing. And, uh, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I think that's a actually a really good point because, and I'm not here, you know, to do the old soapbox on Cisco, but we really pay attention also to the people that are cutting our steaks for our programs. Because I'm sure you guys have in your past um, have gotten steaks that come there and you're like, who cut these? Who really did cut these? And we want to make sure that we have the best people, the butchers that are on our, in our facilities cutting these steaks for you guys. Yeah, I think it's so important. It's so important. But again, another another art that has died, uh, gone the way of the dodo bird, which is a butcher. You know, yes. in all of our kitchens, we have a butchery uh, person who knew exactly the intercostal, all the muscles. They knew, so they were going against grains, and they didn't just go with uh, hack, hack, hack. So you know, these are things that I, you know, if I could ever create the renaissance, uh, I would bring that back. Number one, I would bring that as, a, as one of my main uh, persons in my kitchen would be my butcher. Yeah, sorry, for sure, for sure. I agree. Yeah. Did you mention the dildo bird? Yes, yes, the dildo bird. Uh, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm, this I'm is, a, it's from my island, it's from Mauritius. <laughs> Perfect. Is, uh, there you go. There you go. I love that, man. I love that. Look at me. Man. I have a wealth of information that you don't need, but I have. <laughs> you just remind me of home. That's amazing. I haven't been home for two years almost. But you got to go right. home. You got to go. David Lee is from Mauritius, uh, one of our chefs here in Toronto. He has yeah. Planta, one of the best vegetarian restaurants in the country. Who? who, who? Chef from, who? Dave, David Lee is from Mauritius. Yeah, David Lee. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. It's, it's from Mauritius. Uh, he also has a Nota, Nota Bene as an important. Yes, and he's, and he's going down to New York now. Okay, wow. Amazing. Nice, nice. nice. Well, chefs, I, I can sit here and listen to you guys talk and share ideas. You guys are a wealth of knowledge and just can't thank you enough for sharing some steak tips and just, just hearing your stories. It's amazing. Well, thank you very much, chef. It was a pleasure. Chef, same here. Thank you. I can't wait. We'll keep in touch. And uh, I can't wait to have you guys back here. And it was a pleasure. Uh, I had a blast. Thank you very much. Awesome. And we'll see you guys. You know, the other thing, Rob, I'm just going to share with you. We have a new show called The Lady Butcher. We have a butcher show with a lady that just started last week. So I'm going to tell you next month, you got to tune in to What's check out our lady butcher, Taryn Barker, Taryn out of Barker. Port Moody in Vancouver. Okay. She's a young, hip butcher that is trying to bring back that passion in butchery to young women and it is amazing and, and that's we'll awesome definitely, we'll definitely oh, invite it. you both to attend it and check it out but uh, thanks both of you and i hope all the best and we will see you soon i'm going to be dropping by this summer for a state you're welcome at you're your welcome. place and i just can't thank you enough and thank bridget and Boku's family uh you guys are awesome and i just appreciate all the support and bringing these chefs to us and all the best guys all right, guys. Thank you very much. Bye. Respect. Take care now. Ciao.